we don't send the light, who's going to send it? Amen. And so uh, send the light. Tell people about the Lord. Hand out gospel tracts. Get you some as you head out tonight. Maybe it's been some time since you passed one out. You don't have to get into a full-blown conversation with somebody. You can just say, hey, listen, I go to Grace Baptist. Or, or you can just say, I, hey, I want to leave you with a gospel track. There's some good verses on the back here. If you would, read that in your spare time. And that's it. You know, you don't have to sit there and preach a whole sermon to them. And most people are going to, when they go to break or something, they're going to sit there and read that, you know, and read all those verses. And, and you never know. The Lord may speak to their heart. And so uh, be, a, be a witness in the light, the gospel light. All right, let's pray. Ask the Lord to bless tonight's service. So good to see everybody. Brother Michael Bray, would you lift us up to the Lord in prayer? So pray for Brother Ben and his family as they serve the Lord there. Uh, I've told you before, but I remember when Brother Ben came through years ago, and he said, preacher, he said, we were flying over, and he said, I saw smoke coming out of the canopy uh, in Papua New Guinea in this area that he went to first. And he told the pilot of the plane that he was in, the bush plane or whatever it was, he told him, he said, I want to go there where, that was ha where he saw the smoke coming through the canopy. And I thought, man, and, and I, he, I remember he told when he came back after when he was talking about the trip and all, you had to go, you had to fly into one location, take a car to another location, horseback to another location. Uh, but they faithfully went there and they seen folks saved and all. And so pray for Brother Ben Andrews and his family as they served the Lord there on the mission field. Uh, just, you know, think about it sometimes. We sit here and the safety and the peace and the comfort of, you know, the church that we have and the building and it's a blessing, and I thank the Lord for it. But we've got missionaries on the night, and so be in prayer for the prison service. Also, some of us will be there for that. And then our fifth Sunday fellowship, sign-up sheets on the entry table. Be sure to sign up there to bring a side dish or a dessert, and we'll have a good time with our fellowship. And then Wednesday night Bible study, Kids Club, also Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Okay, amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Brother Chad, another hymn. Amen. Let's go ahead and turn to 536. That's our new song we just started last Sunday. Oh, Zion, haste. Kind of a mission theme or evangelistic theme in our songs today. 536. Oh, Zion, haste. Oh, Zion, haste. Thy mission high fulfilling to tell to all the world that God is light, that he who made all nations is not willing, one soul should perish, lost in shades of night, publish glad tidings, tidings of peace. redemption and release let's all stand at this time
All right, as we make our way back to our seats, let's go ahead and sing verse number two, verse number two, and then verse number four. Verse number two, verse number four. On that second verse. Behold how many thousands still are lying bound in the dark some prison house of sin with none to tell them of the Savior's dying or of the death he died for them to win publish glad tidings tidings of peace tidings of Jesus redemption and release give up your sons to bear the message glorious give up your wealth to speed them on their way pour out your soul for them in prayer victorious and all you spend the savior will repay publish glad tidings tidings of peace tidings of jesus redemption and release amen brother kurt has blessing on our offering Amen. Happy art thou. Amen. All right, let's go to Romans chapter number 11. Romans chapter 11. Romans is a great book to study. 
Romans Road is there. I think we ought to frequent it uh, often to be familiar with it. Why should, why should we know the Romans Road? Is this thing off, Brother Chad? It's not even powered on. I done messed something up. Man. I'm telling you, I turned it on. I turned this thing on. All right, check. There we go. Okay. Guess it wasn't on. So that we can, you know, walk someone down the Romans Road, tell them about the Lord and the plan of salvation and help them understand what it means to be born again as a child of God. And, you know, I found this at a lot of times, especially down here in the South when you talk to some people because, you know, this is the buckle of the Bible Belt. Sometimes you'll find that as you begin... Have you ever been witnessing to someone, and then you go down the Romans Road, and it's like you get all the way to where you're ready to cast the net and reel them in, right? And by the grace of God, obviously the Lord doesn't save them, but you throw in the net, they're about to get saved, and they say, man, I've already done that. I've already accepted the Lord as my Savior. And you're like, oh, praise the Lord. And, uh, and it, your time wasn't wasted, but by you knowing the Romans Road and walking them through the Scripture, you reminded them uh, and brought back to memory a decision that they made. And sometimes... Uh, Peter talks about it, that there are those that forget that they have been purged from their sin. What does that mean? That means, listen, you can absolutely live a lifestyle where you, you, you literally get to the place to where, you, and I know salvation is not about feelings, don't take me out of context, but you don't feel saved, you don't think you're saved, and you forget that you even have been saved. That is, that is a biblical condition that people can find themselves in, even mentioned for us in the Word of God. And so, uh, man, but the Word of God, it brings us back and it reminds us that when we accepted the Lord as our Savior, and so what a blessing that is. But tonight, Romans chapter number 11, we're going to, uh, Paul deals extensively in chapter 11 with uh, soteriology, the study of salvation, and, and there's a lot of good stuff here, a lot of meat here in these chapters uh, in, in Romans here. Uh, but we're going to probably stay in chapter number 11. And he really talks about uh, the Jews' relationship to the gospel of Christ. And even uh, our you know, connection with the Jewish people. Uh, and our connection with God's family. I mentioned it this morning about being in the family of God. Yes, we're adopted. And, and Paul talks about that uh, in the text here tonight. But I think with Israel in the news and we talk about Israel, we think about Israel. Sometimes I think that we have the wrong mindset regarding Israel. And, uh, you know, Israel, we ought to pray for Israel. We should love them. Uh, we should be a blessing to them. I mean, that promise is in the Bible, you know. And he, he said, you know, th those that bless him, he would bless. And those that curse him, he's going to curse them. And, and so there, there's, there's benefits to being a friend to Israel. And I believe that's proven in the word of God. It's coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Father, speak to hearts tonight, Lord. Help us to... Just have a little better understanding, Lord, of Israel and your plan for them and with them. And, Lord, uh, the local church, the, us as saved Gentiles, Lord, how we factor into the equation. Lord, we're thankful for the salvation that we have through Christ Jesus. And, uh, Lord, we pray for Israel. We pray, Lord, that, uh, Lord, that they would trust Christ as Messiah, Lord, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that as a whole that's not going to happen until Jacob's trouble. But, Lord, uh, we know that some are being saved even today as they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do pray for those. And Lord, we pray that you would keep a hand of protection about them, Lord, with the war that's going on over there and everything they're dealing with. We pray, God, that our nation here, that America, would stay as a close friend to Israel. Lord, that we would not turn our backs on them, but we would support them, Lord, the best that we can. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, Romans chapter 11. Look at verse 4. Their fullness. In other words... When they finally come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and they accept Christ as a Messiah, think about how much more blessed we will be when Israel finally wakes up and they accept Christ's offer of salvation. Uh, we were talking about it in Bible class this past week, you know. A rich man, right? What does the Bible say about a rich man getting saved? It is harder for what, Brother David? Yeah, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man... To be saved, okay? But now the next verse says this. And I, and I think sometimes we forget the next verse. It says, but with God, what? 
All things are possible. So it's not that a rich person cannot be saved, okay? We understand that they can be. But when you have everything and you have need of nothing, you know, you really don't think about needing Jesus Christ. But you know what? When you're, when you're having a hard time and when the bills aren't paid and you're struggling to keep food on the table and you got, you got health problems and your family's got health problems, I tell you what, man, I, you know, Jesus is it's very good to have Jesus Christ, okay? He can help us and bless us. And so, uh, you know, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, he takes such good care of us. And sometimes he allows things to keep us humble. And so Paul said it this way. He said, for though I would desire to glory... He said, I shall not be a fool. He said, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be. He said, or that he heareth of me. And then Paul went on. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He said, and lest I should be exalted above measure, the apostle Paul said, through the abundance of the revelations there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. And so uh, God had obviously had his hand on the Apostle Paul, and God Almighty was able to keep Paul from being prideful. And so when he says here in verse number 13, he said, I magnify mine office. He, he's, he's not boasting about his, his position as an apostle to the Gentiles. He's literally describing himself, and uh, he's attempting literally to magnify or glorify the ministry that God has given him. He, he's bragging about what God has done in his life and what God has given him as, in regards to the ministry. And, and that's not a bad thing. Verse 14, he said, If by any means Paul's love for his own brethren was very great, greater will the blessing be when Israel is finally restored after the seven-year tribulation period, when they finally have believed on Christ as the Messiah, are reconciled back to God through his Son, it will literally be, as Paul says in verse, 10, verse 15, it will literally be like life from the dead. It'll be that big of a deal. In fact, you could say this. It will be the greatest revival ever recorded with the nation of Israel. Man, can you imagine? I mean, because right now, if you were to talk to an Orthodox Jew about Jesus Christ, they, they, they're not going to listen to what you have to say. Uh, they, 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 don't, they don't accept him the way you do. And so to think as, as a nation, first fruit is the loaf of bread that would come from the oven. If you've ever, I've never made homemade bread. Miss Opal has made it before, but some of you made it. But uh, the first fruit would be that loaf of was holy and good as far as God setting them apart. Then that which was derived from them, don't miss this now, Gentile believers, they are also holy and good, okay? Remember the Jews in the early church, they struggled with understanding uh, this connection and the equality between Jews and Gentiles. And uh, Paul wrote to them on numerous occasions about that. And this was all new to them. And Paul wanted them to, you know, to understand and be clear that they and the Gentiles, Jews and Gentiles both, had been set apart for God's glory, had been sanctified. And just in case the Gentiles might have gotten the big head for what Paul is saying here, notice this next verse. He gives a strong warning. He said, and if some of the branches, think about this, be broken off. He said, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Now, people in this, in, in this region where, you know, the Mediterranean, they would have understood this analogy, okay? Paul is speaking of the process of grafting in uh, particularly olive branches here. And in olive vineyards, the integrity of a local olive plants over time would start to deteriorate. Now, I, I don't know this personally, but just studying out, this is what they say, okay? It would start to deteriorate because of generations, they call it inbreeding in that world where they, you know, mix these branches with these trees and they graft them in. Now, to the contrary, the wild olive trees were very healthy, they were tough, but the fruit wasn't as good as the domesticated olive trees. So they would take and graft in a wild branch with a domesticated branch, and the result would be a hardy olive tree, right, that's been grafted in. And so think about us as the Gentiles. We have been grafted in that wild olive branch, okay? We've been grafted in. And so we, we, we have the privilege of being grafted in onto the root of God's people. And that's what Paul's talking about. 
Now, that, that, that's exciting, okay? Uh, yes, and, and we've said, I've said this before and you've heard it. Israel's God's chosen people, okay? God has always had a people, right? He's always had a remnant. He chose Israel. He's blessed Israel. He's brought many things through the nation of Israel. Jesus Christ is in the lineage of Israel, okay? And so Paul says, hey, Gentiles, you are grafted in. Yes, you're in the family. You've been grafted in. You're adopted. But look what he said in verse 18. In, in case we were to get you know, high-minded and think, well, man, we're better because they rejected Jesus Christ and we've accepted him. Look what he said in verse 18. He said, boast not against the branches. He said, but if thou boast, he said, thou bearest not the root. He said, but the root thee. And so as Gentile believers, we, we must not boast ourselves against God's people, the Jews, and especially, you know, not against the God of Israel, Jehovah God. You know, it's through them, it's through them that salvation has come to the Gentiles, what Paul said in the text that we just read. And so, uh, if you think about, right, the, the fact that, you know, we've been grafted in, there'd be a great danger in not honoring them and not honoring the Lord God, Jehovah. Look ahead to verse 24. We're going to go right back to where we are, but just look ahead to verse 24, what he goes on to say. He said, for if thou were cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Now, Israel was the good olive tree. We were the olive tree that was wild by nature, the Gentiles, okay? And, 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 and then he goes on to talk about this grafting process, right? In verse 18, he said, Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. And so normally the good olive trees were grafted into the wild branches, but God did exactly the opposite with the Gentiles. He grafted, according to the text, it says, contrary to nature, contrary to nature. So he grafted the wild stock of the Gentiles onto the good stock of Israel. And church, I mean, we ought to not just pray for Israel and pray for the peace of Jerusalem and love them and be a friend to them. We ought to be thankful for them. We ought to be thankful uh, for them being God's people. It's a blessing. Uh, it would have been easy for God to simply graft Israel back onto the rootstock, but he did not. And so verse 18, he says, boast not against the branches. And he reminds the Gentile believers here that Israel is not of the church, but rather it is the opposite. We are of Israel, according to that verse. He said, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. And so you and I, the Gentile church, you know, literally born out of Israel, you could say. Look at verse 19. Thou wilt say then, he said, the branches were broken off. He said, that I might be grafted in. Now, in Paul's warning, he's letting them know what the temptation will be for some of the, the high-minded Gentile believers, right, uh, about being grafted in. They, would, they, they might would say, okay, well, the branches were broken off that I could be grafted in. You know, God did this to Israel so that we could be grafted in and be children of God. Well, look what he follows with in verse 20. He said, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And that, he said, and thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, he said, but fear. And church, we, may we never forget that the branches were only broken off because the branches, that is Israel, did not believe. And our standing, as Paul says here, is through faith alone. It is absolutely through faith, by grace. This reality should cause us to fear God. And, 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 and not, here it is, and think about Israel and not follow the path of unbelief that Israel has chosen. Uh, and, and, and may we never look down upon Israel and be high-minded. And Paul explains why in verse 21. He said, for, and here's the warning, for if God spared not the natural branches, remember, we're the wild olive branch grafted in. If God spared not the natural branches, remember, he broke them off. He said, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Man, that's a warning. Paul's talking to these, these, these Gentile believers in the church there, and he's, he's basically saying, church, if God did not spare his own people, if he, did, if he dealt with them and he broke the branches off because of their unbelief and they rejected him, I mean, do you not think he'll do the same with you and I as Gentiles? The Gentile church ought to thank God for being grafted in. And we ought to be grateful and take heed to what God did. And uh, because 
if God did not spare Israel, friend, listen, he's not going to spare the Gentiles for unbelief as well. And so these are some pretty tough words for the Gentile church. And, and next time we consider Israel, you know, thinking of them and they rejected Christ as the Messiah, man, we ought to think about the fact that, well, listen, we've been grafted in. Yes, God broke the branches off because of their unbelief. He grafted us, the wild olive branch, in. And now we are part of the family. Verse 22, Paul would go on and he says, Behold, therefore, he said, the goodness and severity of God. He said, On them which fail severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And, and he's just... He's reminding these Gentile believers, and you, you wouldn't think that you would have to remind these Gentile believers, but man, if, if God did not spare his own, if he dealt with them, and, and, he, and he was severe with them, and even the goodness of God towards them, both, both of those are for us as well. Early in, 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 the chap, in chapter number 5, Paul reminded the church of, of God's amazing grace. But here, the reminder is this, God's chastening hand. If he dealt with Israel... Church, he will deal with us as well. And, and we were talking about in Sunday school. They just, they'll mock God, they'll curse God, and it does not even bother them. It's almost like, as Paul said, having a conscience seared with a hot iron, you know. Almost like there's no sensitivity whatsoever to the truth of God's word, to the reality that there is a God, there's a creator, and man will stand before him one day. And church, I really believe the longer the Lord leaves us here, the more weird we're going to become. Uh, I had one of the ladies tell me the other day, she was listening, uh, she was talking to someone about Jesus, uh, talking to a young child, uh, a family, and the dad spoke up, and they were at Walmart, I believe, and the dad told her, said, ma'am, I don't want nothing to do with your fake God. I mean, right there in front of a child, you know, friend, that's dangerous. That's dangerous for that man. But that's the mindset of this world we live in. And so Paul, back then, was reminding these, these Gentile believers that God's chastening hand would still be used in their life. God's own people fell because of the hardness of their hearts, Israel, and God dealt severely with them, verse 22. And, and we, as the Gentiles, we have experienced the great blessings of God, the goodness of God. And so here's the admonition, to continue in His goodness, verse number 22. Otherwise, here's why, Paul said, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Well, it don't really matter, Brother Tim. Yes, it does matter. Yes, it does matter. We should continue in his goodness. Change my last name. But they cannot ever deny or get away from the reality that they are born into our family. They are our children, okay? And so our faith in Jesus gave us a relationship with God Almighty. That can never be undone. But God's chastening hand, listen, he can absolutely deal with you and I accordingly. And so he said otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. And so this deals with our, you know, uh, our, his blessings in our life and his chastening, but not our position in Christ. Now, our position in Christ, it's clearly uh, by grace through Jesus, right? But our reward and our blessing in the meantime are often related to what we do in this life that we live. So whether God, you know, whether it's God's, you know, God's people, the Jewish people, whether it's the Gentiles, the local church today, uh, if we live a life of disobedience, we're going to miss out. We're going to run the risk of this, being cut off from the blessings of God. We're going to run the risk of missing out on, on God's hand of protection in some areas. And so it's important that we continue. In verse 23, Paul said, And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, he said, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. So, in other words, Paul says, if Israel will repent of their unbelief and turn to Jesus Christ by faith, God is able, and here's what he's saying, they will be grafted back in, is what he says in verse 23. And so, you know, th th this can seem meaningless on the surface, but this Bible truth is very important. It's the meat of the Word of God. And so, when you think about Israel, now, hey, witness to them. You say, Brother Tim, they won't listen to us. They're not going to believe in our Jesus. You should still present Jesus Christ. God may be dealing with one of them individually. We have missionaries that have been over there, and, and Jews have gotten saved by the grace of God. And so the, Paul's very clear. He tells these Gentile believers that God is able to graft them in again. Now, when you think about Israel, think of it this way. You know, I've heard some say, well, God's done with Israel. I, I don't say that. He's not done with Israel. I look at it as God has placed them on the shelf, okay? He's put them on the shelf. 
He, he's not using them right now, but he has used them. I mean, his word came through them. Jesus came through them. Think about it. There's so many things that have come through Israel, his blessings. And, and so God will use them again. Verse 24, Paul said, For if thou were cut off, he said, cut, cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, he said, how much more shall these, which, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? I mean, that's amazing, okay, uh, it, that God would readily save them if they will turn to him in faith, with faith in Jesus Christ. He would save them, give them a home in heaven. Unfortunately, as a whole, it's not going to take place. And, and God knows the hardness of their heart. Think about it. For God Almighty to design a period called the tribulation period that's going to be bad, okay? Read the book of Revelation. Man, when the vile judgments and the bold judgments are unleashed, it's horrible. It's a time period. I tell people often, if you don't get saved for no other reason, you ought to get saved so you don't have to go through the tribulation period. It's going to be bad. Yeah, hell's going to be bad, yes. But tribulation period is going to be bad, too. And so uh, get saved by the grace of God. But for God to design such a time period, seven years of just horror, right, on earth. I mean, just tragedy and, and, and pain. And there's going to be suffering to the point that men will try to take their own life, but they will not be able to die. It's going to be bad, okay? And for God to create such an intense time period. Friend, listen. People's hearts must be pretty hard, okay? Matter of fact, think about when the, rich, when the rich man died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torments. Do you remember he asked Abraham to send someone to whose house? His brother's house, right? He's in hell. Think about it. You know, I don't believe in missions. Well, you die and go to hell, you believe in missions. He did. He asked him to send somebody back to his brother's house that they might believe and not come to that place. And what did Abraham tell him? Anybody remember he said... He said, if, if they have Moses and the prophets, let them believe them. And then they said that even if someone were to rise from the dead, come back from the dead, he said, they would not believe. Now, that, the, the church, you think about the gravity of that, right? Say you got a, a congregation of folks, people here at church, and let's just say you got people here thinking about, well, do I really? Hell and heaven, hell and heaven. The Bible says that if someone that's in hell, right, someone that is dead, all right, was risen from the grave, and stood before them, some would still not believe. Man, that's a hard heart. I mean, that's like, uh, when, I think about, when I think about the tribulation period, and after seven years of a terrible time, that there's so many, the Bible says, that when you get to the battle of Gog and Magog, the final battle, right? And Satan, you know, this is, he's the supreme leader. And then after a thousand years, people will still choose to side with the devil, like, how? how? Is man's heart that wicked and man's heart that hard that you could have a thousand years of blessing by God Almighty and still choose to side with Lucifer? Church, it ought not surprise us that in today's day and, day and age that there's men and women that still choose today to side with Lucifer. It doesn't make sense to us. We scratch our heads thinking, what are you thinking? Why would you choose that path? Like, is it really worth it? Well, they're not thinking about that. Is it really worth it? They're just deceived many times. And so uh, it, it, it's terrible, but that's going to be the case. And so verse 25, Paul said, he said, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. He said, Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel. And then he said this, Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so God refers to this truth as a mystery. The mystery is that the Gentiles will be united with Israel in receiving God's blessing and salvation. And there are many that don't understand this Bible truth, right? I mean, this is there's some deep verses here. And understanding the wild olive branch has been grafted in. And, and no doubt that most Jews had no idea that God would do such and adopt the Gentiles as his people. They still think, even to this day, the Gentiles, I mean, that we're, we're absolutely wrong. We that have trusted Jesus as Messiah, we're wrong. We don't understand the truth of the Word of God. We need to get back to the Old Testament, and we're waiting on the Messiah to come. And they think that we're wrong. And so uh, Paul warns them not to be wise in their own conceits. Now, in that verse here, he said that the blindness of Israel, 
God allowed this blindness while the church or the bride of Christ is being assembled. He said, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come. And that's going to take place, friend. Listen, when the rapture happens, listen, the church will be assembled in heaven to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's going to be a terrible time here on this planet for seven years. And, uh, and so when you think about Israel, you ought to pray for them. And you ought to understand exactly these verses, how it all happened. And how that, man, yeah, they rejected Jesus. God took the wild olive branch, grafted us in. We're adopted into God's royal family by faith. And so don't be high-minded about it. And don't think God's done with Israel because he's not. They've just been placed on the shelf. And so pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for Israel. Pay attention to these politics. And when you hear, don't, get, don't pay too close attention, but when you hear one group talking about not siding with Israel, that is a bad deal. That's not good. We ought to support Israel. We ought to be there for them and uh, support them any way that we can. Uh, you know, and, and, and just keep that in mind when we think about Israel and all that's going on with them. Church, they're in a bad way right now. And, and God still, even in their blind condition, you could say, think about this. God still has this hand of protection on them. He thinks it belongs to them. And uh, they've been fighting over it for a long time. But friend, listen, God still has his hand of protection on them. And God's going to bless them. And so pray for Israel when you, when you hear about them, when you think about them. And let's not be high-minded, as Paul put it, and realize that, man, we've been grafted in. Praise God, we're in, right? We've been grafted in. We're in the family. But don't think ourselves better than Israel. God's got a plan you know, for Israel. God's got a plan for the local church, you and I today. And uh, we ought to be a witness to them, pray for them, and support them any way that we can. So tonight, let's, uh, invitation is very simple. Let's uh, ask the Lord to bless Israel. Let's pray for them. Church, I mean, what took place over there? Man, that was horrible, right? And all those people that, I mean, they just found, I think, five more a couple of weeks ago that were dead. One was an American, uh, Israeli. And just a lot, lot of terrible things that these people went through at the hands of these wicked, ungodly, terrorist people. And, and we ought to pray for them. You know, it's, 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 it's a terrible time that they're going through right now. And we know the truth. And so just pray that God will use missionaries that are over there, gospel tracts that are over there, and that some of them will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And my prayer is, and not wait to the tribulation period, you know, uh, because that's going to be a tough time. Let's stand uh, tonight as we have a word of prayer. Father, we ask you to bless the invitation. Lord, help us to, to you and that we should pray for them, love them, support them. And uh, God, at the same time, be a witness to them, be a light. Uh, Father, we thank you that we have the truth, Lord, that we've accepted Christ as Messiah. And Father, I pray that we wouldn't keep that inside, Lord, that we would not be... That, that candle that sit under a bushel. But instead, Lord, we would provide light to those around us. Lord, those around the world, even by way of missions, Lord. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Let's take a moment and talk to the Lord. Have a time of invitation. If God spoke to your heart, something you want to pray about. Maybe you know someone that's, um, that's in the Jewish faith. You ought to pray for them. Say, Lord, help me to be a witness to them. Help me to say that which would make a difference in their life. And, and help tell them about Jesus. I definitely would be a friend to them. I wouldn't talk negatively about them and make fun of you know those folks. That's not that's not wise. We ought to support them and pray for them. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And let's do that tonight.
Amen. God bless church. One thing with over there in Israel, with the war, a lot of the Americans that were over there serving, and they've never allowed like a permanent uh, green card situation where they could go over there and take residency and stay. Usually they could only do it for so many years and have to come back to the States and then go back and then come back to the States. Or you had to be in some kind of business type situation uh, like that. And a lot of the Americans that were over there getting the gospel out, a lot of them have had to come back because of the war over there. And so, uh, you know, the devil's obviously using all that even to keep the gospel from going out over there. But uh, just pray for them and uh, be a witness. And I have one Jewish, uh, one man, a couple that was supposed to be a missionary over there, someone to give me their contact. I reached out to this guy probably a half a dozen times, and he never reached back out to me. So I don't know if he just... Didn't need support or what, but I tried. I was like, man, we want to support that. Uh, so if you know of a, Jew, a missionary that's over there getting the gospel out, man, pass that info on to me because I'd love to add that to our, our church, add that to our missions program. So, amen. We did support, we had some in the past that we supported and uh, that aren't there anymore, but uh, I'm sure there's somebody else over there. But pray for them and be a witness and a light. All right, let's have a word of prayer. We'll get you out here. Uh, let's see here. Ladies, be sure to text Miss Opal. She had a migraine this afternoon when she got home, and it hit her hard, so that's why she's not here this evening. Pray for her, uh, I think, because she's got so much going on. But she'll be doing the Taco About Jesus Tuesday. Men, some of us men are going to the prison, so pray for the prison service that the Lord will bless there. And then we'll see you Wednesday night. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Pray dismiss us in safety, Lord. Give us a good night of rest so we can wake up and serve you tomorrow.